Today I'm answering one of your questions and I had a really great question on one of my videos which was the uh, the social freedom exercise does not build confidence in men. So that was the video where I spoke about how guys are giving other men advice on being persistent and staying in the interaction longer than what's necessary and uh, by that I mean where they just aren't developing those social awareness or social intelligence cues to know when they are actually being uncomfortable with women or making the women feel really awkward and creeped out and you know by just saying to guys yeah, yeah just stay in there um they aren't learning those uh those particular cues to say when to just be respectful and let a woman go and give her her peace but i i had a really great question uh and this is from a username called joss 3064 and in that in the comments for that video he asked what about non-verbal cues and body language so i asked him then uh is there anything in particular uh with this video and uh, uh this video is dedicated to you my friend because i did i genuinely thought it was a great question uh especially when i was uh having a think about it afterwards um but i said um uh, or he said uh, that yeah he agreed with my point about not staying in an interaction when someone clearly says no um, he also thinks that no can also be communicated non-verbally, like facial expressions, body language, etc. Um, and it'd be great to know um, how to read those uh, cues or those subtle cues a little bit easier. Now, truth be told, so many men um, do miss out on a lot of subliminal messaging or cues that women do give. But also to give men some credit, uh, a lot of women's cues as well are so subtle that it's like non-existent and it can then be very difficult for men to read between the lines because they just aren't on that sort of emotional level as women are so they can't pick up on uh, a lot of these subconscious cues and in fact it's why so many men have to be literally told no um, for them to actually take the hint but again you do get the guys who are just persistent even if a woman has said no and, and that is where like I would draw the line um, but then there is also the argument of like, how do you know is a no as an official no? Um, a girl or a woman could be, you know, being really smiley and really playful and doing the whole like, no, no, we, we shouldn't do this. There you go. That's that's about as uh, as feminine as I'll get with that. But um, yeah, a absolutely, it is just learning t between the lines and um, and just understanding things. But uh, in regards to the question that Joss three hundred six four did ask. Um, I thought about right what can be uh, a great topic for a video and uh, and I thought to be very specific with these nonverbal cues um, I am uh, calling this video something along the lines of uh, the five nonverbal cues that men get during uh, their cold approach um, because you know there are again so many different situations where um, you know no can certainly be interpreted in different ways um, but I, for specifically for this video, um, I do want to emphasize, you know, where a no can be certainly, uh, sub um, during just that initial cold approach interaction. So, uh, these aren't in any particular order. Um, and I'll, I'll try and give uh, a good explanation, I think for each one and maybe even a story if I can as well. Um, but the first one that I've got here is that she doesn't ask you any questions in return. So when you're talking to someone, even with a friend, usually a good sign that they just aren't interested in having a conversation with you is where the conversation does start to feel very one-sided. Um, maybe you've even experienced it yourself where you know someone has tried to talk to you, you've got other things on your mind that you would rather be focusing on and you either maybe just start giving one word answers or you just ask or not ask things really in return or you ask things that you're just clearly not bothered about um so you might say like oh yeah yeah what, what's what's that like you know so you might 
by by not really showing an interest in continuing a conversation uh i mean that's usually a pretty um good telltale sign um when guys i've seen that they when they've gone into approaching um you know it's been very clear that the the girls maybe just sort of stood there and nodded um and um yeah not let let that conversation almost just sizzle out i think is probably the best sense and um and then what tends to happen is that guys start feeling a bit awkward and they think oh i need to fill in the awkward silence now there's an element that she might just end up being shy and uh you know it, it can then be a little bit difficult to tell but um you have you i, I think a, a, there's a, a great gauge is just you know when those awkward moments happen kind of give yourself like a one strike rule or maybe at most a two strike rule don't continue trying to like ask even further questions after that if you find that you've asked if you find that that awkward moment where she's not really answered or asked you a question uh back after maybe that first question that you've asked then ask a second question if you don't get anything really after that if you get a really bland answer or you don't get someone really ask you something back in return or they're not giving you a proper flushed out answer to your question or statement then that would be the the line where you can certainly call out the elephant in the room and just sort of reiterate like that i know this is probably a really awkward moment um i'm sure you you know you had a lot of things on your mind and you know you were you were busy you were on your way somewhere but perhaps maybe uh, another time um when you're you're uh, less busy or less focused on other things and you might be more open to a conversation i'd love to take you out sometime something like that just calling out the elephant in the room you're also recognizing that okay she's not really giving you anything in this moment um uh, a lot of da dating coaches have the uh, the rule of abc uh, always be closing at least give that a go you're kind of then you know there's no point stretching out a conversation if it's not going to be going anywhere but at least you are giving it a go uh trying to ask for the number and um uh, and if she says no then that's where you say all right well you know what i'm glad at least i came over to to say something you know have a great day uh and then that just that 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 uh i'm not even it's not really a, an abrupt end of a conversation but just at least recognizing that the conversation's not going anywhere she's not really giving you much uh in the interaction to carry on a conversation so just get to the point uh, and if she says she's not interested, then that's that. Um, so hopefully that one that one kind of makes sense uh, that if she doesn't really ask you questions in return. Uh, number two I've got is that her body language, particularly her feet, start turning away from you. So I have certainly noticed over the years through my observation of filming uh, the tens of thousands of, uh, of uh, approaches on the street and in different situations that when people start getting bored of a conversation with someone where their body language might be originally sort of like turned and facing directly at them, their body does start to turn away. Now, I'm, I'm not suggesting then that guys, when that you are talking to women, that you just start looking down and observing their feet and seeing, you know, are they pointing at me or are they pointing at a different direction? But just look at the cluster of the body language of, is her body facing at you or is it starting to face away or is it already facing away? And look at that in comparison as well to what direction her feet are facing. Because uh, the feet are usually more of the telltale sign than, than anything. If someone wants to walk away or if they are uh, going to be going towards an exit. And actually, when you're on like uh, the underground or maybe on a train, that's probably a really great test to see, you know, by looking at people's feet where are they pointing because also people's feet can also point towards people who they are attracted to so it's a, there's a fascinating ideology uh, that can go on with that but also just read between the lines with it don't think that oh if someone's feet are pointing towards someone like if you're sitting down on the underground and someone's sitting on the underground opposite you and you can't really like put your feet in like any direction don't think that oh that person must be attracted to you or you must be attracted to them um but just look at people's feet and look at 
what direction their torso, their, their chest is facing. And that will give you a good indication of are they invested in that conversation with you. If they're turning away during the conversation or if they were already turned away, that's also a really good sign that, you know, she's not interested. Um, but also that can be also a fault of the guy on how he has stopped the woman as well. If you didn't get properly in front of her, or if you didn't get yourself in a position that kind of locks in that body language within that first few seconds, then it can be very difficult to also just sort of jumpstart that interaction because you could be, it's a bit actually like how I think charity workers are, you know, they don't, they where they have to stand on the street they aren't necessarily allowed to block you and get in your path. They have to sort of stand in a position because otherwise it's kind of like um, uh, almost blackmailing you to have to have a conversation with them and they're not allowed to do that. By right, you are allowed to walk by them. So it's then your decision if you choose to stop. So they can put their hand out, they can you know, give you compliments and this and that. But ultimately, then it becomes your decision to stop. And most people then don't choose to stop because they haven't had someone get their body, you know, locking in front of them and then their body is locking with them as well. But then also you can see people's feet if they want to try and escape as soon as possible. So um, so that would be the second one. Um, look at the direction in which their body is facing. Is it locked towards yours as well as look at their feet? Are the feet facing and locked towards you or are they also sort of slightly turning away? Is one foot turning away? Is two feet turning away? Um, third one that I've got here is lack of eye contact. Now there's a difference between if someone is incredibly shy to if someone clearly has no interest in looking at you. Now, usually if someone is shy, again, we're talking about women here, if um, they tend to go, they kind of melt into the moment. They might sort of soften their body language, that kind of feminine energy sort of like creeps out a little bit or pops out and and they do they soften into the interaction uh, and usually in that moment you know they will cross their legs maybe if they are still shy they might cross their arms or they'll sort of maybe start playing with uh their bag their handbag or something um but yeah usually that would be the case if someone is shy, that's where the lack of eye contact will come in. But if someone's just not interested in you, then they will fractionate a lot more than the eye contact that they would stare with you. So what is fractionate, What is fractionation or fractionating? Uh, that is when you tend to sort of look away and you're actually breaking the eye contact, which would diffuse any sexual tension. So when you're holding eye contact with someone for a really long time, especially if it's the opposite sex and you're trying to, you're, you're speaking slowly and, and, um, and maybe even sexually as well, or, or flirtatiously, then you're creating this tension. This is where what tends to get dubbed as the spark. Um, but when that tends to get broken a lot, then you are bringing that, that tension all the way down. And if a woman doesn't want to create sexual tension with you, then she will fractionate a lot. She will look look away. So she might be talking to you, yes, but she won't be holding eye contact with you. And there's a huge disconnect when you have that. Maybe you felt that as you've just seen me looking away from the, uh, the camera lens, but you feel that separation. You feel like, yeah, this isn't, you know, this is becoming a bit of a half-assed conversation that, you know, she's not really engaging with me. But then this is again where you can get straight to the point and say, well, look, I can see you're, you're thinking about other things right now. Um, I Again, I would have regretted it if I hadn't have come over to say hello to you. I, I th thought you looked amazing. But how about uh, another time when you're less distracted and you've got less things to worry about I'd love to take you out on a date sometime. Again, straight to the point, calling out the elephant in the room and you aren't wasting her time and she'll give you a very honest yes or no answer. If she says yes, you swap details. If she says no, 
then you can give her a compliment and walk away. If she says that she's not sure, then you can make the statement that most dating coaches make, which is, well, look, how about we swap details? I'll drop you a message and we can take it from there. If you would like to come out on a date with me, then absolutely amazing. If not, then no harm done. I wish you all the best. Um, you know, and again, that is a good, um, uh, what would be the word, like diffusion of the situation. You've handled that, you know, rejection really well. And again, it leaves it to her to make the decision of uh, you both going out on a date or even your ability to actually pursue her through texting. So it's uh, a really, really great option there. Uh, and in fact, what does come to mind is uh, if you actually check out uh, David Thorpe, who was another dating coach that I have uh, collaborated with, and you'll see his interview on my uh, my channel that I did with him about him escaping the red pill. Uh, on his channel, he's actually got a video where rather than necessarily doing the chase of trying to get the phone numbers, if a girl is unsure about you know, whether to go on a date with him or not. He says, all right, well, how about you take my number and then you can drop me a message if you're interested. Otherwise, absolutely no worries. So uh, I think even that is actually a fantastic idea as well for men to adopt. Uh, I think there's a, a lot of high value coming across from that saying, look, I'm not going to chase you. I've done my part coming over to say something. Uh, if you'd like to go on a date with me, then it is up to you to just drop me uh, a message. So I think there's something really, really great in that idea. Um, next one that I've got, so number four, uh, that you feel an energy drop or that buzzkill moment. So the only way I can really describe this is, I don't know if you've ever had it where maybe you've been out with friends and you have had a drunk guy uh, or drunk person come over to you and just start trying to join in with your conversations or with your group. And the energy just sort of like goes, you know, like, and, you, and you feel it and everyone else feels it like, well, yeah, we really don't want this guy here. Like the facial expressions almost just drop, the positivity just drop. And um, you're just like, like, yeah, yeah, you know, you need to go. And then someone might, you might be like really polite to him, say like, like yeah, you know, my friend, we're gonna be, I'm, I'm catching up with my friends, uh, you know, I hope you don't mind, but yeah, we just want some uh, alone time and stuff. And then they might still ignore it, but you, you still feel that energy drop. Well, that is the only way I can probably explain this one is that, you might end up, uh, you might genuinely have just interrupted someone's day. Uh, you know, it, it happens, but you can't let that stop you from going into talking to women. You can't let that be a limiting belief of like, oh, I can't talk to that woman because I'm interrupting her day. You don't know until you actually get there. And I can certainly vouch to say 95% of the time, you aren't really interrupting her day. You might have just caught her at an awkward moment or you might have caught her maybe on an off day just because maybe she's got personal things going on in her life. But that doesn't necessarily mean she's not going to want some really confident guy who's going to be really charming and sincere uh, and very very respectful to her who's going to sweep her off her feet especially if you're looking for a relationship and if she's looking for a relationship as well but you will feel an energy drop uh with that and you'll feel that you'll you'll just generally feel like she just doesn't want you there and again what you do is you just get straight to the point there is no point asking someone questions if the energy feels off you know and if it does feel too off and you feel uncomfortable then just give a compliment and wish her all the best. The best, I think, interactions that I have seen are ones where the energy was just great from the start, where uh, the woman has welcomed that compliment and that approach with open arms, and she's loved it. And you'll find that there are people that just generally don't like talking to strangers. They just don't like people, anyone outside of their social circle or anyone that they haven't decided who um, they wanted to talk to. Um, so you can never take that uh, to heart in, in those sort of um, moments. But if you do feel just when you are talking to someone where just the energy feels like it's dropped, where it almost does feel negative. And, you know, you can't try not to confuse that with if you're feeling anxious. And the best way to do that is actually maybe just calling that out and saying, look, you know, I was really nervous to come and, and talk to you, but I, I did. I thought you looked 
really uh i thought you were really attractive i, I love the style that you've got going on or uh, i love the elegant walk that you had you know just something like that and if she hasn't sort of accepted that right she's got a guy who's really confident who's come over to talk to her but he's also said that he was actually quite anxious or nervous to come and talk to her and he's also given her a compliment about something about her if she hasn't brought that energy back up and i can assure you you know the energy would come up you she would start smiling her body language would lock on with you she'd perk up you know if that doesn't happen then it's safe to say it's not going to go anywhere so you just think give a compliment wish her all the best and you know make your way uh, away from that situation is the, is the best thing you can do. Um, and then uh, the last one, uh, which I think is probably going to be really the obvious one, is that if you do end up uh, stopping uh, a girl and she doesn't stop for you and she carries on walking, then that's probably a pretty good sign. But I'm going to add an extension of a concept onto this idea because sometimes a guy can just do a really weak approach. He hasn't stopped her uh, appropriately, but if he were to be maybe saying out loud while she's walking away, giving a compliment, if she, she might still turn around. Um, and I have seen that where a guy said, look, uh, she's the girls will pass. And then he said, well, look, you look amazing. And then she's turned around and then smiled. And then that has been the opening or opportunity for him to then actually run back and say like, hey, whoa, 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 like you, you, you've turned around and smiled to me. You've got to give me at least a minute now to say something. Then that is where I have seen opportunities of the conversation suddenly do a full 180 and it's turned into a great conversation and the guy has gotten a phone number. But if a guy has gone to stop a girl, She's just carried on walking and perhaps maybe ignored him and he's given a compliment maybe out loud and she still hasn't turned around. That is, I think, also a very clear telltale sign that she is just not interested in having a conversation uh, on the street or wherever. So just as a recap for these. So first of all, uh, if she doesn't ask you any questions or make statements in return, so if she doesn't really ask you anything about yourself uh, or if she just kind of gives you like one word answers, then get straight to the point uh, why you're there and, you know, give her a compliment, ask for the phone number if you don't get it that's the cue to go. Um, uh, if her body language isn't facing directly at you, so this is both the torso and the feet or one or the other, um, then you have to consider that perhaps she is also looking to exit from the conversation as well, which is then a really good sign to just get straight to the point and, uh, uh, and, and why you're there and asking for the phone number. Um, if there is a lack of eye contact, it does mean that she's not looking to create sexual tension with you. And it might also mean that she is, her mind might be elsewhere and thinking about other things. So again, you have to get straight to the point. Don't waste her time, don't waste your time. And you'll know if uh, just from that, if maybe it's just a case of like her mind just is is thinking about other things at that uh, at that point. Um, uh, if there's an energy drop or a buzz kill, if the energy suddenly feels too negative between the two of you, then that is just a good sign for you to also give a compliment, get to the point, and uh, leave it there if need be. If you find that you're uh, you're unsure if it's maybe you just being really anxious in that moment, so maybe that's more. Uh, going to be referenced to people who are new to cold approaching, then call out the fact that you are a little bit nervous. And if she's giving you that vibe of still with that low negative energy, and you'll know it again, it's like if someone were to interrupt your day, how would you be feeling about that? Especially if you just really didn't want that person there, uh, then that's a good sign just to give a compliment, leave her be with that. And then lastly, if she doesn't stop for you, but uh, then, uh, then that's obviously going to be a clear sign, especially also if you say a compliment out loud and she doesn't turn around to look at you. But bear in mind that if you have maybe also poorly stopped her, then she might carry on walking by. But 
giving a compliment out loud that might see her turn around and smile at you and give you an opportunity to uh, to hopefully have a, a conversation and get a phone number from that. So I do hope, my friend, uh, so I do hope, uh, let me bring up your name again because I can't remember, uh, uh, Joss3064, I do hope that this answered your question. I, 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 I really appreciate that you um you did leave a comment and um uh and you gave me this idea it's much appreciated because i I genuinely want to be able to help more guys with um their anxiety and absolutely i want guys to be going out and doing cold approaching or doing day game and and stuff but they have to certainly develop um their social skills and social awareness and social intelligence there's a lot of socials but you know they they if if we're gonna change the reputation of the dating industry and remove any stigma for guys going out to do the approaching then yeah there's there's got to be some clarity on what can be done what can't be done and where to just read between the lines so I'd love it if you can leave a comment underneath this video. If you've got ideas for future videos as well, do let me know uh, because I love, uh, I hope you can kind of hear the passion uh, from me, but I, I do love being able to answer people's questions. It's so much easier for me to share information. Um, but if you can leave a comment uh, below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this video as well as if you've got ideas for videos. If you need help with uh, overcoming any traumas, maybe you are an anxious person when you are going out doing your cold approaching. Um, I offer integral eye movement therapy services so I can remove your negative memories remove your limiting beliefs that you've got or at least change them so you can challenge them and show that anything is possible for you and change your life for the better. Uh, and also if you are struggling to be held accountable with going out and doing cold approaches, then I also offer life coaching services as well. But other than that, like the video if you can, it really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, comment, subscribe to the channel, stay up to date on more videos that I can put out helping you guys with your anxiety and, um, and have a great day and Look forward to more of my videos uh, coming soon.